Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we're gonna try to get this wood stove completed. I've got a whole bunch of tools here. It's taken me uh, a couple weeks to get like everything ready and assembled to where I can make a kind of concise video. Uh, so let's first jump to um, needing to install a flue into the pipe. We'll get that installed and then we'll come back and see what all tools I've got here uh, laid out to finish out this project. Welcome to Man Time. Well, one thing we're gonna have to do before we get this wood stove uh, installation going any further is get a dampener installed in this first part of the flue. And I've seen a bunch of different ways on how to do it. Like some guy had a jig. I don't think it's really that, I don't know. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is it's two foot. I'm measuring down uh, one foot. I just wanna have it up, uh, you know, directly out of the main heat source, right? Up a little bit. It looks like this is pretty flimsy. Um, this thing was Amazon special made in China. You know, this is uh, a cast iron, but this here is gonna be the weak point uh, for the whole thing, right? So, um, what I've seen online is, uh, is somebody like putting a jig on there. Um, what I did, I measured down one foot, because this is a two foot piece, so I'm directly centered. And then I've got a piece of tape, and I measured all the way around. Um, it was, let's see here, 19. I guess we'll just go through the process here. Yeah, 19 and 1 8. 19 and 1 8. Um, so half of that is 9 and 5 8. And so I've got a mark here. Um, nine and five eighths off of this edge. So you find your seam, run around half a nine and five eighths, which is four and four and a half, four and three quarter, um, four and three quarter plus a sixteenth. So that's where I've got it marked, and then I'm going to center punch this, and then do like a step up for the drill sizes from a smaller to a little bit larger. And it's going to be just slightly undersized of uh, the rod that runs through that dampener. So what I've got here is a 3 16 uh, It looks to be just slightly smaller, so we'll jump right up to that. Okay, so now we've got our 3 16 and what we can do now is measure around our full 9 and 5 eighths, you know, from the center of that, um, from two directions, and then just kind of make sure that we've got the same mark coming from both sides. So 9 and 5 eighths. There's right there, and then we'll measure around from this side also, 9 and 5 eighths in the center. Okay, so I've got two marks. Uh, both of them are just slightly off from one another. Um, so we'll do it one more time, just to double check here. Yeah, 
yeah that looks like it's pretty much dead on right there so we'll go with that one at two foot down I'm sorry one foot down for a two foot piece and mark that right there well my options are drill it out the same exact diameter or just kind of run it in here I think I'm just going to kind of work it in I think that's the way to go, just work it back and forth until it goes through there. Okay. Yeah, that's the way to do that. Just, uh, now you've got a little bit of a lip there, that's okay. All right, and then for this, what you do is you push in. It's got a recess right there where that slides and stops. And then we'll have to get that in here uh, and hold it in here while we're putting it together. feel going through okay now the other problem is this where it's got to come in there and come around that see what's going on there it's got that little curve in it so Okay, now we can see where it lines up on the other side here. There we go. Alright, now we've got it all the way through there. Right? So now we need to figure out, oh, maybe I can watch in here and see what's going on. Um, let's see, well that's the way it needs to go, all the way in and around, ooh, got it, look at there, alright, and then by the handle is how you tell if it's open or closed, pretty cool, okay, let's, uh, let's go back and get this installed, alright, so we're back here in the barn dominium, uh, if you go back and look at some of the previous videos, I've had a couple that are kind of building up to this point, uh, mainly getting the scissor lift, um, having my wife try to control the bucket, you know, with some sort of janky man lift on it, um, probably not the right way to go. But I think I've got just about everything here that I need to, you know, install the stovepipe. But first thing I did was kind of lay out all of the pieces that are leading up and out of the roof. So uh, I started actually with the top right we got this big stainless piece here um, we've got a top that's going to go on to it and i was just kind of test fitting everything making sure that we are going to be good to go here you know when it comes time to assemble anything on the roof side that's where i want to have the fewest amount of uh problems right yeah <laughs> apparently my dog is just like a child he's like rummaging through my tool bag uh, anyways, all right, so we've got our top, right? And then right below that, uh, we're going from a double wall to a single wall pipe. So I've got this adapter piece. I just wanted to make sure, like, everything is going to fit up, you know, the way that it's supposed to. Um, so starting at the top, working my way down, and then taking this and making sure that it's going to fit, you know, onto the adapter, and then from the adapter, uh, down you know the stovepipe and that way I can see you know what's supposed to fit one problem that I'm having is the stovepipe isn't quite fitting into the you know it's a homemade wood stove so the six inch piece of pipe isn't quite fitting in there so I had to grind a couple slots in that we'll take a look at that I'm gonna bring you in real close show you all the tools I think uh, I'm gonna need for this job and maybe you can get an idea of the tools you're gonna need if you're going through this same process hopefully you'll be able to see enough to get the picture here 
All right, so I've got aluminum tape. And the reason I've got aluminum tape is because, you know, the stove pipe doesn't fit quite right down in here. Um, I've been, as you can see, a couple grind marks there, hammer and a punch to get that opened up a little bit to get the stove pipe to fit down into it. But uh, plumb bob, we've got that. Uh, we've got a tape. We have got a torpedo level. I went ahead and just ordered a new one, so I've got one for here, you know, and one for at uh, the shop that I'm in now. This one here is actually a Made in USA and Amazon Empire brand. Um, yeah, just pick Made in USA. Now the stovepipe connects together to itself. It's a slip fit, but they recommend putting some screws in there. And um, I've got some Tex three quarter inch uh, self drilling screws, metal to metal, and that should work just fine. Of course, a driver to get those installed. Um, and then you're gonna need a, for me, I'm off grid here a little bit, so it's gonna be a, a cordless jigsaw, battery, um, Sharpie marker, some drill bits, and some jigsaw blades. The aluminum tape, I think that, oh, the strapping. So I'm gonna come off of the uh, purling with some, uh, I was gonna use uh, Unistrut, but the Unistrut was kind of expensive and I've got enough leftover metal here. I think we'll be able to do it without that plumb bob, all that stuff. So, I think we're there. Um, what else do we need? Oh yeah, there's one more important part. Yeah, so right here might be the most important part of the whole operation. And this is one of those, um, you know, cut to fit whatever size tubing you've got on there. And this one goes up to, um, let's see here, 279 millimeter. I guess it's all in, uh, I guess it's all in millimeters. So I've got to convert millimeters. Let's see, five and a half to 11 and a half inch uh, seal, right? And it's got these ribs around here. We're gonna put caulk on there. And the way that I've seen this done, the ribs with the roof line or the R panel, um, you wanna put the corner right in the rib. So that's why we have got the plumb bob. Um, we're gonna go up to the roof with the scissor lift, uh, drop that plumb bob down, and then move the stove to where it's gonna be lined up with one of those ribs. And then I'm going about two foot off of the, off of the wall, um, actually from the edge of where the uh, I-beam is. So I'm two foot off of the wall with that. And I've also got some fire brick. Uh, let me show you that. Yeah, we are off grid for sure out here, aren't we? So I ordered a bunch of this fire brick. Um, this is, you know, replacement fire brick. I can see already that I did not order near enough um, for what's gonna be going on here. And what I was thinking was I was going to line just, you know, a row around the sides here. Um, but I'm thinking it'd probably be a good idea to put some along the bottom too. Um, but it looks like I'm about half of, uh, of what I'm actually going to need here. Hmm. Yeah, let me lay these in here and kind of see where we end up. All right, so these are called Protowell Wood Stove Fire Bricks. Um... And they are nine inch by four and a half inch by one and a quarter uh, thick, six pack. Um, for they're on sale right now for 35, 36 bucks. So I'm gonna order four more of those. All right, here's what the inside of this looks like with uh, 12 of those laid in there. I mean, it's just barely making a dent in the bottom of that, so. But that's a good, that's a good healthy start there. Yeah, like this. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep the seam toward the back for aesthetics. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get this on here and see where we're at. forward pretty close yeah see this is coming out at an angle so I've got to you know align this a little different anyway 
Okay, there we go. They're straight up and down there and here. They're straight up and down there. And now we're thrown off this way. That is pretty darn close. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. So this is where I'm gonna wanna drop the plumb bob into, right? I wanna get this situated where I want it, um, and then screw it in, and they recommend three screw holes, you know, a third off of each other. And then from there, um, I can drop that plumb bob into the center of this from somewhere in the ceiling and align this to align with the ceiling per that plumb bob. Does that make sense? Yeah, one other thing I was waiting on trying to get was a uh, extension ladder. I have an extension ladder. It is a 20 footer, um, but 20 foot doesn't mean actually 20 feet. <laughs> Crazy enough, right? Uh, so this one is a 24 footer found on marketplace. These things are getting ridiculous expensive. Uh, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot trying to get a 24 foot uh, fiberglass Werner, um, you're looking at somewhere 350, something like that. Uh, really, really high. I uh, got this one for less than half or thereabouts. Um, yeah, Werner extension. This is an older one, but really well taken care of. Um, made in the USA? Let's see here. Yeah, made in USA. And this one, uh, it says it's the electrical or electrician special or something like shockproof all that uh, this will come in handy for a lot of the projects around here my other one was aluminum so this is going to be kind of better overall ladder so let's see if it reaches up to the uh, to the roof line So here, here's my old ladder. Um, it uh, it does not have the same kind of put togetherness that this one had, and I think I think these are even backwards. I mean, it, it's pretty raggedy. Uh, you can see, like right here. You know, I was just asking for trouble. This thing is uh, it's all bent up. You know where it's actually holding. <laughs> Uh, just not a good, not a good situation there. So new ladder, half the price of new, always nice. A little bit of jiggle, but nothing like what that other one had. And these have, you know, this is a, this is really the, the system you want here. I guess this would be some sort of locking mechanism that I don't know how to work. Anyways, let's keep going. Uh, Ugh, already getting stuff in the gutters. Okay, well, this is what uh, the roof looks like. <laughs> this is uh, this is quite a ways down. Okay, so I've made a little bit of progress. Uh, I've got some of those fire bricks on order, um, so I'm not going to be able to run it until then. But what I'm doing is... Uh, you can see halfway up here, I've got a level uh, on the stovepipe right there, center screen there, is a uh, that torpedo um, level that's on there. And I'm getting these ran up. So right now, I've got this lower one screwed in to the base, you know, on the stove itself. And then these other two up top are just loosely in place. And I'm going to take the level and screw those in uh, when they're level, right? So let's do some of that. Oh, also just real quick, a shot of the work area here and coming up, that is one two foot piece and two four foot pieces. And right now we're about um, four foot, maybe, maybe three foot from the roof. Um, I've got another two footer. I think I'm gonna put that one on and then um, have the adapter piece and be ready to drill that hole and just make sure 
uh, my placement for that was was on point. All right, well, I finally got it about where um, I think everything is gonna kind of end up. Um, it's it was a chore getting it into this you know steel outlet from the wood stove here. You know, homemade, um, very professionally done, but the diameter of this was just a bit too small for this to fit in there. You know, the way that it was intended. Um, I probably would have had an easier time uh, getting it to slip over it which is kind of the reason why I started at the top and set everything up to figure out you know I didn't just want to put this first piece in here screw it in screw it in and start working my way up and then realize I had it upside down so uh, even though on these Duravent uh, stove pipes they are made in USA and it does show a directional flow uh, so everything would line up using that directional flow uh, one thing I did, I put the seam toward the back and got that going up there like that. Now, um, I've got this correct front to back. So when you have it correct, uh, what you want to do there is screw in from either the back or front, right? So I know that it's correct back to front, uh, so I can screw in from the front. Yeah, still good there. And now I'm going to put one into the back. And I'm just going to I'm just going to use four. Uh, it says three, but I think it's going to be easier for me to maintain maintain you know perfectly straight up and down uh, going with four in here. It's wanting to angle. I want to angle back a little bit. So we'll lock it in place, totally vertical. Yeah, so here's what's left to choose from. Again, I tried to get enough for two, um, but what I ended up getting was, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the four footers, uh, two of the two footers, and then, I got two of the okay well this is this is actually a double wall telescoping 29 to 46 um, I haven't opened this one up yet to see what it looks like let's take a look oh this goes inside of that okay so let's see here I've got I've got this adapter piece so I can kind of figure out how this is gonna match up here okay so here we go um, pipe flow pipe flow going this way so this would be going up uh, this should fit maybe right inside of here oh no yeah, that's right yeah okay so that for this one you don't need the adapter this one just bolts right up that's nice so I can just, yeah, yeah, I can just put this right up there. Cool. steps to do here is to cut this to size 
Now the minimum size here says it's five and a half to seven and a half. The very next step down, seven and a half to eight and three eighths. So that's where I need to be. This is eight inch. Uh, so I am just gonna come in here and cut. And I guess we'll see how that goes. Wow, this stuff is uh, brutally difficult to cut. Um, nice sharp new razor and uh, it is not not easy wow okay well i will come back in 10 minutes when i finally get this cut out according to the measurements on the side here i end up <laughs> just really butchering that with a razor blade but at least i didn't cut my finger half off you know doing it so it looks like this should fit on here um supposedly will it uh, i don't know let's try Yeah, nothing dainty about this process. Uh, so just shove over and then shove down. Shove over and then shove down. You know what, soapy water would probably make this easier. Yeah, one thing I do keep on hand up here is a simple green. So we'll try Putting a nice liberal amount of simple green kind of in between here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, simple green. That's the way to go. Okay, now we've got simple green on there. Just slide it down to about a foot and a half below uh, where it's going to go. And then that way I can take it up on the roof, slip it down in there, and then just maneuver it down from there. That is nice having that uh, extra kind of tight like that. It looks like these first, these first two ribs are gripping it really nice and tight. Um, so yeah, as tough as that kind of was, it wasn't too bad. And um, yeah, should be good to go. Well, I'm gonna be real honest with you. Uh, a lot of this video isn't very good because obviously there's no lights in here. And on these overcast days, you know, there's just really nothing to show. But the last thing I need to do is get some bracing onto this stovepipe. Um, and I've got some of this strapping and basically what I'm planning to do is kind of wrap it around here, screw it into this. And this is just some chunks of leftover something. From, uh, from the construction. And so I'm gonna screw it down to the purlins back here and then uh, get a couple straps around here. I yeah, I know it's uh, virtually impossible to see here, but uh, the big thing about doing this project before I even get up in the scissor lift, I am actually pre-drilling and fitting all of these strut braces. Uh, so they're all pre-cut and they're all pre-drilled, right? So I've got this just ready to hook onto here and it's accessible from the scissor lift side. Where I'm not gonna be, you know, jostling around. And I've got it pre-drilled here where it's actually gonna screw in to the purling. So I'm not gonna be, you know, fighting it while I'm up there. I can get all that done down here. All right, man, well, uh, lighting still not great, but we can take a look here and see, you know, how this is strapped uh, to the stovepipe here. And I've got those struts coming off, one down low, one up high, and then up there uh, through the roof. All right, well, right here is the wood stove. And I've got it loaded up with wood. Uh, but I also, uh, one of my subscribers said, man, you should get some fire bricks and, uh, and load this thing up with fire bricks. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I've got a bunch of fire bricks and uh, they were just Amazon uh, cheapies, basically. And I'm gonna load fire bricks basically all around this thing. Um, leaving maybe a little gap in between. And then I've also got the floor of it lined with fire bricks. So um, I ended up having to get, let's see here, there's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, 18 so far. Um, Yeah, 
this is going to be going to be a little interesting here since I've got the the tubes coming up the sides. Um, might not be able to get all of them in here exactly the way that I want to, to have them in here, but I'll at least have you know fire bricks coming up the sides and in the front here. Um, may be able to come up the sides, yeah, like that. Come up the side on this side, like that. And then it'd be, I wonder if there was a way to cut this. It'd be nice to have a one. Maybe like this, like that, with a air vent in the front there. That could work. Yeah, that should work. For this process, um, all I've got is some, map, you know, I've got map gas up here, so this is what I'm going to use. Um, this stuff is really too expensive to be using for this, but we're going to try it out here, and we're going to watch it go from that to a raging fire. Now I've got the flue on the bottom open, uh, flue on the top open, so we'll just start burning here. Whew. All right, that is hot. Now, uh, let's see here. I guess we'll time lapse it and see how long it's going to take. Well, you can see here out into the forest, uh, that first startup was a little smoky, um, but it's starting to clear up pretty nice. And looking out of the top of the stove top, um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's that's that initial um, initial startup, and of course using, you know, construction wood. It's not the cleanest burning stuff. So, I think that's the majority of what you're going to see um, when you first fire up your you, you know wood stove uh, with old junky pallet wood. And, and you know this is going to be mostly pine, um, not real clean burning, and doesn't really smell. You know, it stinks when it burns. It smells like you know pine tree campfire so it's what it is but it's gonna be real nice to get all this junk cleaned up that's one of the things I'm gonna be working on um, this is gonna be an actual you know drive path I've got between this stump and this pole here and it should be about 20 feet uh, where you know a vehicle can get in here nice and easy but I've got to get all this junk out of the way and this is helping a lot getting this cleaned up and now having something to do with it <laughs> actually heat the place yeah so here's what happens uh, shortly after heat up I've got one of these you know thermometers right on the stovepipe and it is already uh, it's been you know maybe 15 minutes um, already up into the orange there so uh, once it gets up into the orange like that I start you know tamping it down uh, to where we aren't getting so much um, I've got it fully opened I've got the bottom open so let's get in here and just take a quick peek. Yeah, we're we're fully engulfed. Very nice. All right, man. Well, while I'm thinking about it, I thought I'd go over uh, some of the pro tips and uh, and gotchas in installing this uh, this wood stove and the stove pipe going up to the to the roof there. One and first and foremost, I guess, is cutting this hole uh, with a jigsaw <laughs> oh boy so I ended up having to get a uh, cordless jigsaw I went ahead and bought like one of those uh, kits off Amazon with all the jigsaw blades for metal and bimetal and you know fine wood and rough cut wood and all that stuff you know like a 32 piece set well the first thing I did it comes in you know a little pull apart thing one of them is bent and I go to bend it back and it just snaps and so I just knew my day was was in for it, uh, trying to um, cut this out. And I ended up 
I ended up breaking all either three or four of the the medium to longer length metal ones and then there was some extra long ones that was wood and metal you know rough cut and I ended up having one little piece uh, that was up you know in the rib and was able to finish out with that but make sure you have a bunch of these uh, or a bunch of those blades and maybe go and get an actual name brand type of blade and just the blades that you're going to need from the hardware store the no-name ones off of Amazon are just junk so buy brand name when you're buying your uh, your cutting bits for the metal you know especially when you're doing it uh, around these these humps and ridges and I ended up doing it from the inside uh, another pro tip there use the stovepipe run the stovepipe all the way up before you draw your line and get your center line uh, and then yeah trace it and what I did was I ran a string down off of a sharpie so I was perfectly lined up with that stovepipe with it uh, perfectly vertical using a uh, torpedo level that torpedo level that I got for this installation job um, but that way the the hole lined up perfectly and I just kinda uh, went out about half inch to three quarters of an inch outside of the uh, actual stovepipe I went with double wall and having you know 16 foot of travel on that pipe and then going into the double wall just one foot below the roof line I think I'm gonna be fine there as far as the heat rating on this I was looking over okay here we go uh, high temperature resistance tested to plus 200 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit plus 275 degrees Fahrenheit now down on the bottom on the single wall I am getting um, I'm able to run the wood stove at about 700 degrees is about as low as I can get it you know filled up with wood uh, that's just kind of where it likes to run at so um, up up top and in that double wall I think I'm below the the 275 but you know you may want to if you're unsure you know go to the triple wall uh, one other gotcha and a pro tip is you know use the same type of stovepipe uh, so I went with the Duravent, uh, locally available through hardware stores and actually at Tractor Supply and some of the local places. They even carry some in stock. That extendable one, I got that one uh, that was actually on the shelf. And the other ones I just ordered from Home Depot and, uh, and picked it up there. But Duravent for the pipe, Duravent for the adapters, Duravent for single wall, double wall, uh, triple wall, whatever you want to do there with the adapters, all the same brand. Uh, that's going to save you a lot of frustration uh, trying to put it together all right back onto this uh, when you go to install this over it use soapy water and uh, I put the triangle again in line with the ridge as shown on a YouTube video by I think a company called R&R uh, buildings or something like that I don't remember who you are but if you're watching this down there in the comments if you want to take some credit for it um, but yeah putting this on there what I did was um, I got it down on the pipe got the pipe in uh, through the hole came back inside attached it using one of those clamps um, then went back up onto the roof and uh, and slid this down you really want to slide it down enough to where it's gonna you know bite onto the R panel and then uh, you want to basically screw all around this this corner right so where it's meeting up at that corner I had uh, one in top and then two on either side and then right next to where it's coming down on that corner and that was first applying uh, master seals np1 they've got a really good caulk uh, that a lot of the professionals use you know for metal buildings and stuff like that it's expensive it's over ten dollars a tube uh, but you're going to be really well off there using that stuff so uh, yeah just a whole bunch of screws all the way around the top and then finish it off with a bead of the np1 master seal uh, caulk uh, all the way around there. I went with gray caulk because it matches stuff and you know um, yeah but the uh, the measurements here where you cut the line off I think that was a good um, a good deal there and this is again 140 to 262 millimeter or five and a half uh, to eleven and a half uh, inch there and you can see how much of the ceiling surface we've got around that hole you know quite a bit uh, all the way around there so you can go quite a bit bigger than you need to and still be okay with the amount of ceiling you're going to get um, so we're going to have a nice hard rain tomorrow and uh, hopefully I can you know see if this is going to hold up the caulk is going to have 
had about two days to set up and dry. Um, other than that, oh, the biggest pro tip I can give you is to remove the stickers off of your stovepipe. Uh, I, I did a, a test fire right after we got the, you know, ceiling and anchoring and everything done there. Um, so two things, uh, I started to smell just a stink of a burning plastic or chemical. Uh, that was the, the tags on each one of the pieces of the stovepipe, the Duramin. Uh, they leave a nice plastic sticker with a heavy adhesive on there. That stuff started like, I finally saw it. You know, I smelled it and I was like, oh man, this, this thing is not sealing good. It's letting out, you know, smoke or the smoke from the wood is toxic, something like that. No, it was the little plastic sticker on the pieces of Duravent. I finally saw it smoking on the back and by that time it was too late. It had given off, you know, just a stink, stunk up the whole building. I guess I'm a lot more sensitive to that, uh, even with a little bit of a cold. Um, yeah, not good. And then uh, pro tip, uh, another pro tip there for the wood stove installation. Um, oh, the uh, aluminum tape that I thought I would need around all the joints. Uh, didn't see any smoke leaking out any of the joints. Um, so I guess that's, uh, that's optional, you know. And if you're trying to do like a, a nice stovepipe installation in your living space. Uh, it's kind of ugly having that aluminum tape on there, so you really don't need it, and you can save yourself some money there uh, just not buying it. Um, yeah, other than that, man, that stove, <laughs> that stove is massive. It doesn't put off as much heat as I thought it might. Um, I think it's more of, uh, you know, as, as thick a wall as that steel is, um, it, it just doesn't like radiate the heat quite as much as I thought it was going to. But